Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. In this episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner, we're going to be discussing modelling camber effects on tyres. Now this is a tutorial I'm actually really excited to give because over the last couple of weeks, I've had a number of members of the Chassis Sim community from different um, uh, formulas come to me with a number of different problems related to camber and to an extent they were actually really starting to talk about uh, the same thing. So. What I'm really excited about what we're going to be discussing today is actually addressing some of those um, key concerns. And we'll be able to do that by really just having a bit more of an understanding of where Camber comes into um, the chassis sim uh, version, uh, the chassis sim version free um, tire model, and um, how we can use simulated data and the tire force modeling toolbox to capture that. Now, to kick off, it would probably be a good idea just to take a quick review of the chassis sim version for your tyre model formulation. So, what we've got here is that we've basically got our traction circle radius and our self-aligning torque, which is uh, which is primarily a function of uh, the um, load on the tyre and the temperature on the tyre. And wh uh, where camber comes in is that camber comes into this little puppy right here. So basically, we've got Fy is multiplied by a function of camber and load that's basically, it's effectively a multiplication factor and it's scaled and it can be scaled between, and, it, uh, and it's pretty much scaled between uh, 0 and 1 and did us, uh, and uh, so that covers the lateral force. For the longitudinal force, we've got once again, our um, scaling factor, factor mu traction circle, which is also a function of camber and load, multiplied by the traction circle radius, and also multiplied by our um, step angle and slip ratio. For those of you familiar with um, the Bajaka time model, don't freak out. Effectively, um, in terms of um, uh, the Bajaka time uh, uh, model, that's your D term. This is uh, and uh, this is effectively a slip angle function, which is that big horrible polynomial uh, polynomial thing in the middle. And this is effectively um, and this is effectively the bits that multiply that uh, longitudinal um, uh, that uh, multiply that uh, longitudinal uh, and lateral uh, tire force. Now, let me just state though from the get go that what we've got here is this is an approximation. I'm not going to profess to you today that what we've got here is going to be the magic silver bullet that's going to make you an instant expert on camber. However, what it is, it's an approximation for you to be able to try and capture what's going on with the car. And if you treat it in that attitude, you're going to get a, a significant way down the road. And uh, trust me, if I had the perfect tyre model um, uh, right now, trust me, I would be retired and living in a subtropical paradise. So, Moving on, what does those uh, for, what are those multiplication functions for uh, for uh, camber and load for the traction so, uh, for um, the lateral force and the longitudinal force looks like? They look uh, uh, in more detail. They look like this. What we've got is that the multiplication function for lateral force is effectively one minus scale factor C Y times delta camber minus delta optimum squared divided by 100. And for the, um, uh, the traction circle um, uh, radius, where the, the traction, so, sorry, the um, for the longitudinal force multiplier, we've got our mu multiplication, 1 minus SFCX times delta camber squared um, on 100. Now, for those of you who are currently using chassis sim, you'll actually see this detailed in um, uh, further detail in the chassis sim help directory you'll find a uh, pdf there called um, c sim uh, tire model documentation i'd really encourage you to have a bit of a um, read through that but the highlights are delta cam uh, um, delta camber represents negative camber and the delta optimum represents the camber where max lateral grip is generated now i want to really state here and state here very very clearly that the camber that you are actually putting in is not static camber. It's actually what's running on the car. As we all know, when a car goes into a, uh, when a car breaks, when it goes into a corner, the camber is going to change from the static uh, uh, from the static camber that you'd set up on the setup patch with. So what we're basically plugging in in here, our delta camber is the camber that is currently on the tire. And what the delta optimum camber represents is that camber at which you are generating the peak. La uh, uh, which you are generating peak lateral grip. 
Effectively, think of this as a way of scaling um, uh, the um, Canberra effects as basically um, as a percent uh, as basically a percentage divided by a hundred. It was actually a, a sort of echo back to me by uh, by a good uh, uh, by a good friend of uh, by a good friend and a um, close colleague of mine. And I think that visualization can help you here. Now. What this looks like graphically is the following. So what we've got here is that we've got CFYMT, we've got that basically, we've got a peak value of one, and we've got basically a delta camber optimum, uh, and that's basically the uh, the camber at which we're generating the max uh, limp, uh, uh, the, the max grip. For our, uh, the, uh, for our longitudinal variation, what we've got here is that we've got our mu traction, uh, our mu init, which effectively allows us is a very handy tool to allow us to scale the um, uh, the traction circle ellipse. And what that represents is the fact that um, uh, longitudinally, that you're going to get your peak longitudinal grip when you stand the tire uh, when you stand the tire uh, when you stand the tires up. Now. The beauty about this um, uh, representation is the fact that, look, you can have some tire models that, when you see uh, when you um, start cr uh, uh, when you start cranking on uh, uh, when um, you start uh, cranking on camber, it just gets better and better and better and better. The beauty about this representation is it really allows you very very fine control of saying, right, we know that um, for this particular tire. When we start putting in cambers over four to five degrees, the grip's going to go away. This we can capture very, very, very succinctly, and this is basically pretty much evolved. Uh, uh, this approach pretty much has evolved over the last ten year, uh, over um, the last ten years, and we've pr and we've applied it to very, very good effect in a number of different form uh, uh, in a number of different formulas. So the whole idea is that just going back uh, 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 going back here is that. Basically, our delta optimum is that camber at which we are generating peak lateral grip. I cannot state that clearly enough. Our mu multiplication factor for our longitudinal force multiplier effectively scales the traction uh, 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 scales um, the traction circle radius ellipse. Mu multiplication is almost like your first go-to if you say you've created a model. The braking, the braking or acceleration is uh, too optimistic. That's almost your immediate go-to. Um, the SFCY and SFCX parameters effectively give you is basically a direct indication of how sensitive your adjustments are to camber. So, um, uh, so the whole idea is the bigger those numbers are, the more sensitive the tire is to camber adjustments. The less those numbers are, the um, uh, the less sensitive it is to camber adjustments. Now. Let's talk about some rough rules of thumb to get going. Okay, for a typical open wheeler sports car, these are some, some suggested parameters to start with. SFCY0 is 2. SFCX is also 2. Now, KCY and KCX, what that does is that will basically vary um, not just the camber sensitivity, but it will uh, 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 that will uh, uh, that will vary the camber sensitivity as a function of uh, that that will vary the camber sensitivity as um, a function of load. To start off with, I would leave that as zero. You don't um, you don't want to confuse yourself by um, going to town on this just yet. Mu naught is um, uh, start. Uh, 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 mu naught is started as one k mu, which represents the drop off of uh, the initial um, uh, mu multiplication factor as a function of load is left at zero. Delta optimum is free, and k delta is um, uh, is zero. That basically represents how um, the camber will um, vary as a function of load. Now, in terms of um, some uh, rough, uh, in terms of some uh, rough rules of thumb. Open wheeler sports cars is about two. Touring cars, look at its extreme, it will be about two, but that's an absolute extreme value. In reality, though, I'd start up between 0.5 and 1. So uh, there's basically just some rough rules of thumb uh, to, uh, there's basically some rough rules of thumb uh, to get going. Now, once you've actually, if say you've got a tyre model that you're starting from pretty much a blank sheet of paper and you want to know where to start. What should you start choosing for your delta optimum camber? Well, some rough rules of thumb 
is to go in and have a look at some uh, uh, some uh, simulated data that's uh, returned. So what we've got here is we've set up our, uh, we've just done a simulation run here where uh, we've basically looking at um, our front and the left canvas. And to make the visualization a bit simpler, I just did a smooth track approximation. One of the few approximations, I will do a smooth track approximation that I'll present to you, but I'm just doing it to illustrate a point. So what you do is to get a rough rule of thumb to where you should select your delta optimum camber um, to be, what I like to do is I like to take a look at where my peak cambers are going to where my peak cambers are going to be and I look at that spread and I basically divide those two numbers and um, rough them in half. I realized that on some early documentation I um, said to basically take your um, opti to take your static camber and add about a degree of camber for it for your delta optimum camber. This is an approach that um, uh, we've tried uh, that we've just tried over the last two months and it's actually starting to get some significant headway. So what I would do for um, your initial optimum camber is effectively take the average of um, your peak optimum of uh, your um, of your peak camber in the corner and take the average. So here we've got 3.89 and 2.3. So we effectively take the average of that, which is approximately about um, 3.1 degrees, give or take. Ditto at the rear. I simply average between 3.25 and 1.76. Okay, so what do we do in terms of actually quantifying this using the um, chassis sim um, uh, tire force optimization toolbox? Well, to do that, we go to tire force modeling and you go to tire force modeling advanced. Now, what I will do here is I'll go optimize lateral camber, optimize longitudinal camber. And what I'll do is that I'll enter my optimum, uh, my initial optimum camber here, which is what we've just um, uh, done by looking at our simulated data. But what I will do is I'll typically put in a delta of about say one and a half, even two degrees so that I've actually got a bit of a search space that I'm looking at. So um, I cannot stress that point highly enough. In terms of selections for SF um, Camber Y and SF uh, uh, and uh, the delta in which to be looking through, as I said, if I'm dealing with a really, really sensitive uh, tire with a lot of sensitive camber, I'll, um, uh, uh, I might go to two, I might even go to three, and I'll typically do a delta of about one, maybe one and a half, just to really give me a good search range. And you know you're in the right pocket of when you go back and you take a look at the return um, tire force optimization results. If those results are within the bounds that you've set, then you know that you're onto something here. Ditto for um, the longitudinal camber multipliers. I'll start off with um, uh, I'll start off with one. I'll start off with uh, my initial guess of say two, maybe three for an open wheeler. Sometimes 0.5, maybe even one uh, for a touring car. And I might just use a one for the SF Camber X just to play it a little bit safe. Once I'm done with that, I'll obviously import my monster file, make sure I've got my curvature and my bump profile loaded. Then I'll run the tire. Uh, uh, then I'll run the tire force file. Now, from time to time, you're going to be presented with a tire that um, is uh, with um, a tire that really does need some uh, tweaking in particular when you've got a situation where you've got the inside tire that's really really light uh, that where you've got an inside tire that's really really lightly loaded or is experiencing some really really big camber gains now the way that you can tune that are a couple of ways one method I would suggest is that you'll see here in your tire camber properties here. I'll just click on here. This is pretty much that curve that um, we spoke. Uh, uh, that's pretty much that um, uh, curve that um, we spoke about um, uh, before. But you now, if you click on here, you've now got the option to edit that three-dimensionally. So what you can do. E, uh, uh, so uh, 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 so um, uh, what you can do here, if we go to access property um, uh, cal uh, calculator, we can basically set up a max load, say maybe at 500 kilos, and I'll set max camber, say, at um, say 3 degrees, and I'll click on OK. And what I can do is I can tune this as a function of load, so you get a really, really, really fine control. My suggestion is that you use this if you've got proper tire force test rig data, that will give you some idea of where to go um, with this, or you do it after you've run the tire force optimization results, and you need um, to really, really um, dial, uh, uh, to dial, uh, dial this in. But this is something I would regard more of an advanced feature. So let's review. 
the key to representing campus sensitivity in chassis sim is this little curve right here. What you're choosing is that you're choosing an optimum camber at which you generate your peak lateral grip, and then you, cho then you choose an initial uh, a mu init to basically scale um, uh, the traction circle radius, and, uh, and uh, the sensitivity of, and your camber sensitivity is uh, basically dictated by your scaling factor camber Y for lateral and scaling factor camber X longitudinal. Now, if you also want to do some manual tuning on this, if you go into um, the tire, if you go into um, the tire force modeling and go to tire model quick start, you'll see your lateral camber sensitivity, your lateral camber sensitivity there, the um, curve of that graph. You'll see you'll be able to put an optimum camber sensitivity and an init longitudinal camber um, sensitivity, and you can actually play around, and you can actually play around with that quite a bit. So. Uh, wrapping up, a really good way of visualizing this is to think about those curves um, for representing our camber sensitivity, now longitudinal camber sensitivity, and where it uh, and uh, where it plugs into the tire models is effectively it's a multiplication of the traction circle radius. If you can remember that, that will put you in. If you can remember that and remember this averaging little tool here as um, uh, a way of getting your initial guess for um, uh, your uh, for your optimum camber. And remember, in um, your tire force optimization in here, to give it a really good search space, then you're well on your way to really nailing down what your cambers are doing and how they affect what you uh, and how and uh, where they plug into what the tyres are actually doing. And using that, you'll be able to find that using the combination of that uh, of, of that model and the tyre force, uh, and the, uh, tyre force modelling toolbox, you, it'll be a great tool for you guys to get a significant way down the road and really get your head around what the tyres are doing. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.